We will move to Article 34, author authorization for the municipal light plant to provide telecommunication services. And we have a representative from the municipal light plant. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I am Robert Harper, 20 Westvale Meadow, chair of the municipal light board. Article 34, I can read it. It's an authorization for the light plant to provide telecommunication services. It was passed last year as Article 26 at the town meeting, and the law requires that in order for this to take effect, it must be passed uh, again this, this year. It, it uh, is basically, the article says, to determine whether the town will authorize the Concord Municipal Light Plant to construct, purchase, or lease, operate, manage, and maintain a community cable television and telecommunication system for municipal use or for the use of the customers of the light plant. Uh, services to be provided may include, but not be limited to, television, internet access, telephony, security, remote meter reading, or other services as may be appropriate, or take any other action relative there too. Uh, at the present time, we all we are asking is that we have the, we be given the authorization to go ahead with this if we see a viable business plan. As of now, this item is being studied. The technology is evolving very rapidly, and uh, cost estimates that we heard a year ago are probably way out of date by now. The cost may be considerably lower. We are not ready to say, let's go into the business. What we are saying is we want to keep the door open so we can study this business, and if, something, if a good, viable business plan comes along, then we can get into the business. We have the authority to get into the business. I, I think that summarizes our, our, our position. And, and so we ask that you pass, we ask that this be passed for a second time at this town meeting to continue to keep this process alive. I wouldn't run away just yet. No, I'm not. Uh, members of the board, questions? Ruth. <coughs> Ruth Lauer, 69 Border Road. Mr. Harper, the, um, the town meeting last year took the, its first vote, a positive vote on this proposal. This year is the second vote on the proposal, but, but if I'm correct, that does not empower the light board to begin this new business. No, it empowers us to look into the new business. It, it empowers us to look into the new business, and if we see a viable business plan, then to, to, to enter into it. But it would require a lot of work. It's not something that we're going to jump into right away. Would, um, would a viable business plan require um, town meeting approval? Further. Further town meeting approval, thank you. It might. That I don't know. Thank you. Other questions from the board? Uh, in which case, uh, from the audience, anyone questioning? Yes, Ms. K. Thank you. Um, now, Mr. Harper, um, uh, I represent a group of citizens, and we have uh, questions about the proposal that the We don't know at this time. We, we, we don't know at this time. This is, this is what we are waiting for. We are waiting for a business plan to be evolved, and the business plan will not be evolved until the technology is in hand and is known to be good. Again, this is a premature question. The, 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 there, is, there is no business plan at this time. All, all we are saying is that we want the authority to develop a business plan if we see 
that the opportunity looks good to develop such a business plan. We don't have answers to questions like that at this time. We have another comment from the audience. I'm Mike Simpson, Nine Barches Farm Road. I'm also a member of the Municipal Life Plan. Would you like to come up to my head? <clears throat> Mike Simpson, Nine Barches Farm Road. I'm also a member of the Municipal Life Plan, and I was a member of the Telecommunications Study Committee that uh, put together a report that led to this article uh, starting last year. Uh, let me first of all clarify uh, uh, and expand on the answer that Bob gave to Mrs. Lauer's question. And, and if you read the wording of this article, it authorizes a, num a lot of things, but it doesn't authorize the light plant to expend any monies in the operation of a telecommunication service. It does not authorize the light plant to borrow any money be a bonding issue which would be necessary to install such a system. Those authorizations would have to be done at a future town meeting uh, that would be a major issue. Uh, the bonding authorization would require a two-thirds vote and, and this would be a, um, the type of thing that would require a detailed business plan as, as uh, Bob mentioned that would have to be thoroughly aired with the whole community, with all the potential users. We'd have to get a lot of market data to show that, that we could do this as a successful plan. It would have to be reviewed by uh, numerous committees, the cable committee, the finance committee, the board of selectmen, uh, before coming to town meeting. And we are not proposing anything of, of the sort at this time. Uh, I would say that this was the third telecommunication study committee over the last eight years or so that all came into being because a number of citizens felt that telecommunication needs were not being addressed by the existing commercial suppliers. Um, we uh, looked hard at the situation last year. We did some business plan uh, evaluation. We had some consultants. Uh, a look at how a system might be laid out, what it might cost, and so forth. And the Telecommunication Study Committee looked at those results and said, at this point, the risks are too large to go forward based on what we see as the market. The light plant board felt just as strongly that it was not time to go forward. And the major recommendation was that, that uh, the light plant uh, continue to uh, uh, keep an eye on uh, what what the market needs are for telecommunication services and, and uh, whether they're going to be met uh, in the future uh, by uh, Comcast and Verizon. And, and if they're not at some point in the future, then, then, uh, then the ball would start rolling again and the type of plan I just described would, uh, would start to come together. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes, sir. I, I can't say, it uh, doesn't sound like a town committee to me. <laughs> so uh, and I'm, not, I'm not sure we all got the same, same one. Uh, but uh, th thank you for the interesting question. Uh, somebody in the back, yes, sir. Yeah, Bob Nelson, 943 Lowell Road. And uh, my own thinking on this is going to evolve, certainly my frustration with both the cable service and the range of options is a lot less than today than it was four or five years ago. My next request is, um, uh, I have two individuals who are not public residents here tonight uh, who have some information to share on this, and if I can make a request through you, uh, to have them take three or four minutes to present some of the detail of the study which the Deacon Hill Institute at Suffolk University has done on this subject. Uh, I would be greatly uh, appreciative of that. The first is Paul Cianelli, the president of the New England Cable Operators Association. And uh, with him is David Kirk, who is the director of the Hill Institute of Southern University. Each of whom has described their best to kind of gauge some specific information about what the submission of these operators in this 
Certainly we want to encourage all public participation. Uh, might we inquire as to uh, just what the Beacon Hill something is? Uh, the Beacon Hill Institute is connected with the uh, you know, Tufts University. They have done a variety of public research, uh, public policy studies. Uh, those of us who have looked at the turnpike issue and seen a recent study on uh, the issue of combining the turnpike authority with the mass highway department. This uh, apparently has been done uh, through looking at this slide in the scale system in Concord, what it means in terms of potential costs, what it means in terms of um, just the range of technology and options that are out there in a really competitive environment. Uh, so um, I understand this information will be out in the community. They asked for three or four minutes to kind of present it, uh, but certainly what they intend to present in three or four minutes doesn't scratch the surface of what uh, will be out there in the form of written materials. Well, since you're a resident of the town of Concord and you'd like to have something presented, I expect we should allow that to happen. Uh, I do would ask that you said three or four minutes. That seems like an appropriate amount of time. And uh, if there is uh, any affiliation that the Beacon Hill Institute may have in terms of direct connection to or funding from uh, any particular party, would appreciate that being disclosed as well. So I'd like to come and take the podium. Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the selectmen, thank you very much for this opportunity. I certainly appreciate it. My name is Paul Cinelli. I'm President and Chief Executive Officer of the New England Cable and Telecommunications Association. We represent all the cable television companies in New England. There are 17 uh, different companies that operate uh, in New England. Our position, quite frankly, is that um, uh, we are very suspect of government ownership of television and uh, internet. and. Um, we, as an industry, uh, oppose that. And we commissioned, a, a, um, we commissioned Beacon Hill Institute, well respected uh, in Boston, have done many different uh, uh, public uh, studies to examine uh, the current environment uh, in the telecommunications business, in general the broadband business, and uh, the particular aspects of, um, of the town of Concord and uh, the Concord Municipal Light Plant. And with that, um, I'd like to turn this over to um, Mr. David Turk, who's the Executive Director of the Beacon Hill Institute. David. Thank you. I, uh, I appreciate the opportunity. I feel a little bit like the British soldiers coming to look for weapons stored in the farmhouse. Only I'd like to think that I'm actually on the side of the town in this case. Our interest in this, uh, in this uh, issue stems from our interest in the whole notion of government getting involved and taking over what are normally uh, activities reserved for the private sector. And uh, it uh, stems in particular from the concern that arises once an enterprise like this is considered that it will receive far different treatment than it would if it were in fact undertaken by the private sector. If uh, a cable company comes into a town and does a bad job, as many cable companies have in the past, they stand in danger of being bought out, taken over, and their uh, stockholders will bear the brunt of the law of the mistakes that the management makes. The problem in a, in a proposal like this is that uh, people who undertake the project are not responsible to stockholders, but rather to taxpayers and to ratepayers who won't have the same recourse as stockholders. If a company makes a mistake, the stockholders sell the stock, and that's the end of it, and they bear the loss. 
But if a private entity like this makes a mistake, then the taxpayers and ratepayers are frequently stuck holding the bag with little recourse except to pony up in terms of increased rates and taxes to redeem the mistake made by the, by the town provider. We think that this proposal is rife with the possibility of mistakes. In fact, there is a business plan that uh, underscored the initial proposal, and that was performed uh, by an organization called Uptown Services. We obtained the financial data contained in this Uptown Services report, which finds quite glowingly in favor of the project. However, we subjected this same report to statistical analysis and to financial analysis of the kind typically uh, performed in, the, in cases of uh, business plans such as this. And we found that rather than this project yielding a net benefit to the town, it could very well incur a very substantial loss, running from some 362000 to $2 million. Indeed, we found that when one looks at the uh, probabilities concerning rates, uh, costs, market share, and the like, that the project could be expected to run about a half a million dollar loss if, in fact, it was initiated. This is um, in part because of the fact that the cable internet market is a very different market than it was a few years ago when this whole idea was inspired. We have fierce competition, not just from Comcast, but from DirecTV. Uh, there's a new technology called broadband over power lines that is gaining hold, where people can get their internet service directly over their power lines rather than going to either one of these services. And of course, there are already uh, some 20 or 30 internet service providers already doing business in the town. So if the town gets into this business, it is not as if it's coming in where there is no other provider, and certainly not as if it's coming in where there is not already high quality service available. It will be going head to head with a strong private sector providers with deep pockets that will be in a position to upgrade their services, to make the investment, and to bring the kind of programming that they will bring in order to hold on to their market share. I don't know the details of what it means for this to be proposed, but if I were a member of this town, I would want to know very clearly what I was authorizing the light plan to do if, in fact, it gave its proposal. Because once this project is on the board, there will be no stopping it. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have questions for, <laughs> for members of the board about uh, the presentation? Yes, Ruth. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> You indicate that the business plan that you reviewed and which wasn't implemented um, was flawed in some way. Well, I would, I would only say that it was, it, it was um, limited. It, it, it did not explore the, the, the risks that were inherent in the project in the way that anybody we included could do if they had a mind to do so. The, through the, as a matter of fact, the report to its credit said that even, even when that report was issued uh, in 2002 that they would recommend a new market survey. Uh, and we, we give them credit for recommending that. That was true when they wrote the report. It's even truer now. But, but the, the report was fine as far as it went, but we were able to take it further and subject it to this financial analysis. So I, I'm pleased to hear you make those statements because I think it would, it would seem that the, uh, the committee then um, was acting from strength to have done the analysis that they have done, that they had done, and then undertook a proposal to the community to study further. So that, to me, doesn't seem to be a flaw. And I was trying no. to determine where you found the flaw in that. No, no I, I, I didn't. I, I didn't find my 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 whole uh, concern is around the uh, failure or the the fact that the report did not address the numerous contingencies. Uh, that were present in this, and also, of course, the report is old now. Uh, two year, a year and a half is a lot of time in this business. So, uh, no fault of the authors; they did what they were supposed to do up to a certain point. Anyway. To pick up on your analogy, I assume you would have counseled the Minutemen not to gather at Barrett Farm as well. <laughs> uh, yes, sir. Throughout, and tonight, really well. Um, uh, following the um, uh, your introduction. This is a great idea. Thank you. Um, at the time that we undertook this study last year, uh, or the year before that, um, the cable service in this town was laughable. It was owned by a uh, giant corporation that made decisions in some far off place that had no bearing on anything having to do with our service, and we had none. I mean, it was ridiculous. So we had a viable option at that time to look at providing our own journey. 
just as we provide our own electrical service. We don't do that through a commercial or a private corporation, but we do it through a town-owned utility. And we get a lot better electrical service in this town than any other town around. And the same people who bring you that electrical service are the people who are contemplating this uh, possible extension into the business that's possible under Massachusetts law. Uh, yes, it will require uh, further authorization by town meeting to spend money, but I think it's a great idea and we ought to go forward. Thank you. I believe I may have inadvertently neglected a member of the board. Yeah, um, <coughs> you had indicated that your study, um, I'm sorry, you indicated your study at the Beacon Hill Institute was commissioned by the cable industry. Was it 100% funded by the cable industry or what other potential sources No, that's of the, uh, the only people who funded it. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, the Beacon Hill Institute is part of the Department of Economics at Suffolk, which I also happen to chair. So it's a part of the university. I okay. did, forgot to mention that. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Yes, sir. Town moderator. Thank you very much for uh, Could you answer whether the uh, Beacon Hill Institute has also studied the improvements that our cable service has made over the last few years um, in light of the uh, fire department that came down the pipe a few years ago? The improvements in the proposed? No, the improvements that Oh. Did the Beacon Hill Institute uh, study those, or did you just study uh, what might or might not be done by the administration or by the public? Uh, we, we studied the possibilities that are likely to emerge if this uh, light plant proposal is accepted in the light of existing competition. Uh, existing services and potential uh, competition from other sources. Uh, it it um, certainly reflects the fact that the service has improved under the under Comcast, which has taken over the system. Uh, but it, it 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 allows broadly for challenges that the light plant might face in the way from that competition a new competition that could emerge. Thank you. Do we have uh, other questions? Uh, yes, sir. Richard Wheeler, 99 Sudbury Road. I'd like to ask your uh, prudence or organization, uh, does it receive contributions from any one of the television providers or the organization that you represent? Uh, no. I, uh, I, we have a lot of contributors. We have a couple of hundred, but I, I, no, we do not. No, no television. You're talking about, say, the networks or, or perhaps HBO or something like that? But the Comcast, the Have we? Um, no. We, we did this project under contract with, with the cable organization, as said. But we don't have contributors from that industry, such. We do get contributors. We want some contributions from them. Thank you. Thank you. As enjoyable as it is to watch somebody else roast for a change, uh, <laughs> perhaps, do you want to say something, Bob? Well, I, I want to reiterate the fact that we are asking the town to pass this article simply to give us the authority to continue our investigations. And you must remember that if, if and when we decide we think we should go into this business, we will be back asking for further authorization from town meeting. So, so all, all I'm saying right now is don't close the door if, 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 and vote this down this time and then we, we would not have the opportunity to do it again for another several years. So, so we, we, uh, we're not saying we're ready to go into the business, we're simply saying keep the door open. Other questions on this subject? All right, in which case we will move to Article 35, uh, a the town meeting being asked to consider adopting provisions for agreements for mutual police aid programs, and our town manager, Chris Whalen, will speak to us. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just a reminder that the town of Concord accepts donations 